Hello! In this video we're going to take the first step towards securing our web application. So another way to explain this would be create, getting started with uh, creating a registration page. This is an absolute minimum so at the point where you're creating a service or a site or a community where you want people to be able to log in and do whatever they do, they're going to need a username and they're going to need a password. They're probably going to need things like emails and Right, and all kinds of other information, but this is this is the minimum. And so we're going to take a couple of steps here to just get a little bit further with the conversation each video. So we talked a little bit about uh, password integrity in a previous video. I'm not going to talk about that here. We're just going to start working on how we're going to build the table so we can get this whole login happening. So here's my uh, here's my source code. I've got a form. You name, pass one, pass two, those are the names of the fields. Notice that I'm using post, right? It's appropriate to use post here because when you're passing around passwords, you don't want that to happen up in a visible context like the URL. So get is not really suitable here. So I gotta use post. Action in my form is the form itself. Uh, this function I wrote in a previous video, this is some quality of the password assessment. I'm not gonna use that because it's kind of just gonna make this demonstration harder. Um, so down in here I've got an is set. This is set is based on whether the form is submitted or not. I'm determining whether the form was submitted by checking on whether that thing got submitted. So if you do, then I get my database connection. I uh, sanitize the data that needs to be sanitized. And now let's take it to the next part of this. So first step, once you've got the information to work with, ultimately you want to get it into a database table. And so that's why the sanitization happens. The other thing that I would probably want to do would be to look at the quality of my password, and that's why I wrote that function. But I'm not going to do that here, because it makes for an easier demo if I don't do that, honestly. So the first thing I should do is check that the two passwords match, right? I mean, whenever you're allowing someone to register for a site, there's nothing they could do that would be worse than thinking they typed in a password and not typing in that password. And so how we combat that is with the two fields, right? Pass one and pass two. So what you should do is you should have a little if block and you'll say something like if pass one is equal to pass two. Quite simply, right? The easiest thing you can write. If those things are equal, then what, right? And else what right like that's the question so really what needs to happen here in my opinion we could do this big nested thing or I can use a flag I'm a flag fan flags force you to know a little bit about logic so I like using flags and this is just gonna be called flag and how about I initialize it to false if I initialize it to false then what I can do is say if the passwords match then I flip that flag to true and if I want to do it like this, since I'm defaulting it to false, there is no else. Right? I don't write else's, generally speaking, that I don't need to write. So I assume that the password's garbage, right? It doesn't match or whatever's wrong with it. And in the event that the form was submitted and the passwords match, then true. All right. And so then what happens at this point, if I wanted to also assess the uh, strength of the password, I could put another thing in here, right? Like if pass one equals pass two and it passes that function, then proceed, right? And so by proceed, I set that flag to true. Somewhere down here, there's gonna be another if block and that if block's gonna look a little like this. So if the flag is equal to true, oops, I meant to write equals, not those, then this is where the insert happens. Right, like so this is the part where we're gonna create the table, stuff our things in the table, really get the storage going, and, and that's what we'll build on to eventually in this series. But basically, you don't even wanna think about inserting the, the data unless it's good data. So at the point where we've gotten here, now let's start talking about the table. So at the point where we've verified that the passwords match and the form was submitted, if we were going to check for quality of the password, we'd check for that, but that literally just adds a step to this that I'm not trying to cover right now. So if you've seen my videos before, uh, you're going to probably be familiar with the next step I'm going to do. So what I like to do is imagine the first time a user uses this site, uh, the table needs to be created. So I like to do this. I like to write a, uh, a chunk of SQL, which creates the table. Right, so if not exists, then create the table called YT login. It's going to have a, a, a primary key, a uname, and a pass, and a timestamp. Um, you don't have to write this. Like so I would imagine most people, when you're just putting a site together, you probably just use uh, 
PHP my admin or something like that and you just create a table manually but I like to automate the process so I can take this thing and just upload it to my server and everything gets that like, gets uh, created manually so it's not really part of the process but that is what my underlying table looks like so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this I'm gonna submit it and then I'll show you the underlying table and then in the next video we'll look at uh, hashing and salting our passwords for better storage but for now I'm gonna save this I'm gonna refresh this page this only works if I put information in it. Let me put a good password in here, ABC, something real easy to match up because all it does is check to see if it matches. I submit the query and right, nothing kind of happens. It's kind of a, it's a weird deal because nothing really happens, but let me show you what did happen. So I'm gonna go check out my database and let's go look for that table. I believe it was called YT login. So notice that there's the table and it's an empty table, so browse doesn't go very good, but structure shows us what we need. So there's a primary key, there's a uname, there's a pass one, and there's a time stamp associated with when the account was created. You might be wondering where the heck is pass two? You don't store pass two, right? Pass two only served the purpose of verifying that pass one is what the user thought it was. So you don't have to write these create table scripts, but I do because I know that this table is going to exist locally on XAMPP where I'm testing it and it's going to exist remotely and I don't want to have to go through the trouble of creating that table twice. It also just prevents the possible scenario where you're trying to insert something in a table which doesn't exist yet. And then from here the next thing is just going to be the insert and we'll talk about why that on its own is a problem in the next video. So thanks for watching.